La domanda per Steve Carrell si era consapevole che l'immagine della gente smart, eh, diciamo, nell'immaginario dei fan più appassionati di The Office, avrebbero ricondotta l'immagine della gente Michael Scarn e se eh, le citazioni alla serie The Office come la canzone degli Abba iniziali erano in qualche modo volute o solo coincidenze occasionali? Uh, don't, don't think I quite got the translation, although I could, I, I will answer a completely different question <laughs> since I did not understand. Um, my favorite food, <laughs> we had a delicious dinner last night, and I have to say, uh, the food in Rome is fantastic. Um, we had three different types of pasta, which were all delicious. Um, I, started, I started eating fish, which I thought initially was eggplant, <laughs> which, which both frightened my wife and I, um, but we, we enjoyed it uh, profusely. As, as, uh, in, in terms of, and you're asking about Maxwell Smart and, and how uh, people's perceptions of, of, are, are of the character. Um, I'm not, pe people have a very, you know, we, we've traveled around, I don't know why I'm holding this up, because I can only hear myself. Um, <laughs> We've been, we've been traveling around and, and going, we've gone to Australia, we've gone to Mexico, and, uh, and so this is our third stop on sort of the, the international tour. And we're finding that, that people are aware of this character. People know who Maxwell Smart is and, and, and are, are very specifically tuned into Don Adams' characterization of him. And so it, it, it's sort of a, it's a, a daunting task to try to recreate this um, thing that, that people see of as iconic. Um, and the only thing I can compare it to is there's an American version of this TV series called The Office, which started in, in England, which uh, an actor named Ricky Gervais did such a wonderful job creating. So I had the task to sort of recreate the same type of character in the United States. And, and I, I really took the same approach as I did with this, to not duplicate, to not try to copy or mimic in any way, but to just do the best that I could. Because the, 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 the whole idea, the premise for Get Smart, I think is very funny. This, this sort of counterintuitive guy, I, I never saw him as an idiot. I never saw him, and neither did the original producers of the show. They really thought of him as a, a fairly competent, a spy who um, was able eventually to get the job done. And, and he wasn't always the best agent, but he, he did the best that he could. Um, he was more of an everyman than a, a bumbling fool. So that's, that's the essence that I tried to take from the original show and then just interpret it the best way I could. So I, I kind of tried to set the bar low for myself and just so honestly, just, just try to make it as funny as I could make it and not, not try to, to reach the heights of, of anything or anyone else. And the food is great. Due domande. Uno, nel Finci, io ho visto una doppia lettura, cioè al di là dell'umorismo piacevolissimo, del filone così potenziale, c'è anche una satira abbastanza forte è la prima volta credo che si riesce a ridere in qualche modo post 11 settembre perché da James Khan che Emila Bush che leggeva la capretta ha eh, la, la gag dell'accerino sotto la scarpa allora volevo sapere se questo è, vuol dire che è cambiato qualcosa negli Stati Uniti dall'altra parte mi domandavo anche quanto spazio di improvvisazione c'è stato sul set nel senso che eh, Carrell ha una grande figura di improvvisazione, ha duettato anche se solo vocalmente con Jim Carrey in orto, ma volevo sapere quanto c'era di eh, eh, improvvisato anche nel, nella sceneggiatura. Um, we would always do <clears throat> at least a few takes as exactly as scripted, because the, the script was very funny in and of itself. Uh, it's always nice, and, and I think Pete will reaffirm this, to have options once you go into the edit room to be able to choose different jokes and, and, and see what, what elements will fit together better than others. So it's always, it's always good to have improvised options. So we all played around, and everyone was a good improviser. Everybody, uh, 
I think everyone went in with the attitude that they were just going to have fun. Uh, as to the post 9-11 mentality, I think Pete might be able to speak to that better than I. I, I think we really, uh, I, I think we all went in um, less with a, a political or social axe to grind and, and more just, just to have fun and, and to uh, create a, a piece of, uh, of something that would be entertaining and, and, and potentially have some uh, satirical uh, qualities to it. But I think you could speak to that. Well, the original show was born in, in a Cold War era in 1965, and a lot of the jokes were very politically satirical. So someone asked me when we first started this project if we were going to be doing it as a period piece because the Cold War was so ingrained. And I said, no, as long as we keep our eye on the political landscape, we are in a post-9-11 era. Uh, and there's a lot to satirize, especially that something that we learned um, that day is that our government agencies don't communicate that well with each other. The FBI doesn't talk to the CIA and vice versa. Uh, and that's something that uh, Mel Brooks uh, had a lot of fun with skewering uh, back in, in the 60s. And so we realized that we had a, no, a whole new uh, kind of ammunition to play with this time. And, and that's what kind of kept the continuity between the two generations of our, of our interpretations. Io vorrei fare una domanda ancora ai produttori e penso che alcuni anni fa ci sono stati ovviamente tantissimi capolavori nell'ambito della commedia, basta pensare a Preston Sturges, a Billy Wilder e difficilmente i festival accoglievano questi film, l'Academy Award si accorgeva di loro e a volte persino i critici erano eccessivamente severi tranne poi rendersi conto che erano alcuni dei film più belli della loro generazione oggi mi sembra che la situazione sia un po' cam cambiata anche grazie ad esempio al posizionamento ottimo che ha avuto Giuno l'anno scorso che era comunque non proprio un film comico ma una commedia molto leggera eh, avete l'impressione che le commedie stiano in qualche modo ottenendo una stima maggiore da parte della critica e da parte anche e soprattutto dell'Academy? Well, uh, comedy is always very difficult. I love that you brought up uh, Billy Wilder and Preston Sturgis because all, it's traditional that always when comedy first appears, it is not, people don't receive it usually uh, the same way that the drama is received and um, something that the Academy would recognize. And so it's, it's, it's always wonderful to watch when comedy first comes out and people, the audiences, really are the first people that appreciate and love comedy. And that's really why we make them, for the audiences all over the world to laugh and forget about their troubles for a little bit. And, um, and it's only years later, usually, that uh, critics come around and they say, oh, I just saw that again, and it was pretty funny this time. And so it's, it's kind of fun to watch that happen years later. Not uh, so much fun at the time. Not, not as much fun at the time. But I remember um, what, my first movie that I worked on was The Naked Gun. And um, when that first appeared, people um, criticized and said, oh, no, it was with the Zucker Brothers. And, They said, oh, it's, you know, it's not as funny as Airplane. And then we did another one, and uh, it came out, and they said, you know, it's not as funny as the first one. And now I, I just appeared in Entertainment Weekly, and the first Naked Gun is considered a modern classic. And so it's always, it's fun to watch that happen. And, uh, and you know, we certainly hope that um, people will enjoy the movie, but the most, The, the best part of, of making this, and I think, you know, for all of us, is to stand at the back of the theater and just listen to people laugh in every language. That's, that's the most rewarding. I think people sometimes are um, slow to trust if they've been entertained by a film, and I mean, thoroughly entertained, and, and, and they've laughed. I think people, they're unsure if it's been a true, quote-unquote, movie-going experience. But, 
you have wonderful examples of comedy throughout history, and especially comedic performances that have been recognized by, you know, the Oscars, Motion Picture Administration uh, Association. Excuse me. I always think of. Well, just because I want to talk about her some more, but Meryl Streep, you know, her performance in Devil Wears Prada was, you know, a, a, the leading role in a comedy, and she got nominated for for an Academy Award. And so I think that there is there is definitely recognition, probably not as not as much as uh, as you get with dramas, but it's certainly there. <laughs>